Hello, algebra students. Mr. Lawrence here, and we are going to be learning to factor trinomials. Now, I used to teach there's many different types of trinomials, and there are many different ways to factor them. So some of the people that have had me in the past, or your parents who uh, are pretty good at math, um, are going to find the way I'm teaching this now very strange. But I found that uh, students don't know their multiplication facts as well as they used to in the past. I don't mean as a put down, it's just a fact. You don't have as much number sense as they used to, say, 10 years ago. And so a couple years ago, I started teaching this differently. Um, I am just going to teach you how to turn this trinomial, this x squared plus 12x plus 35, into a grouping problem. And then we're just going to factor by grouping, because you should be getting pretty good by, at grouping by now. So here's what we're going to do. First thing we're going to do, we're going to identify the coefficient on x squared. Okay, you might say I have this written as ax squared plus bx plus c. Okay, and we'll talk more about that later. But right now, I'm going to ask myself what numbers are in the position of a and c. Okay, well, c is obvious. It's 35, right? And then a has a 1. The first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply 35 times 1. I'm going to multiply 35 times 1, which of course is 35. Now, I'm going to list the factors of 35. So let's see, I might have 1 and 35. I might have 3, nope, I want to have 3, 4, 5, 5 and 7, I think that's it. 1 and 35, and then 5 and 7. So let me list those again. Okay, now why, you're probably wondering why I'm wasting my time doing this. Well, I'm not wasting my time. I need Two of these factors. I can't mix and match. I can't use 5 and 35 because 5 times 35 is not 35. They have to be factors that equal 35. So I can't use 7 and 1. I might use 5 and 7. I might use 35 and 1. I need two of these factors and I'm going to add them. How do I know to add? Because the 35 is positive. If the 35 is positive, I'm going to add the two numbers together. In hopes of getting what number? Well, I want to get a positive 12. So I take the factors, I multiply the 1 times 35. I list the factors. I'm going to get two of these factors that add to get positive 12. Well, it's obviously 5 plus 7, or you could have said 7 plus 5. It doesn't matter which way you do it. Now watch this. I'm going to rewrite this trinomial. I'm going to put an x squared here. You know, I don't need to put the 1 there. I can if I want to. And instead of writing 12x, I'm going to write positive 5x plus 7x. Would you agree that this here is 12? It's almost like I'm unsimplifying. I'm uncombining like terms. Okay, plus 35. So well, now I have a four-term polynomial, and I can group. I'll group these two. I'll group these two. Put a plus in between. So my GCF of the first quantity is x, right? So I'll have an x times quantity of x plus 5 plus GCF of the second two is 7. And so I will have 7 times the quantity of x plus 5. Ooh, it's highlighter time. Dun, dun, dun. Look at that. I've got an x plus 5 and an x plus 5 sitting right there. So I'm going to factor out that x plus 5. Right? So I'm going to divide by quantity of x plus 5, and I'm going to divide by the quantity of x plus 5, okay, and when I do that, the x plus 5 will come out front as a quantity. What's left inside? Well, these cancel, giving me x, and these cancel, plus 7, okay, there you go. I just factored this trinomial. Now, to check your work, you can double distribute. Some of you will call it FOIL. I'll call it the double distributing. I'll multiply x times x and get x squared. I'll multiply x times 7 and get a positive 7x. 5 times x, get a plus 5x. And then 5 times 7, get a plus 35. And so when I do that, I get x squared plus 12x plus 35. Now remember, this is only my check. My actual answer is this. This is the check. If I foil, oh, factored it properly, then I will get 
I will get what I started with. Okay, let's try this again. So I identify A and C. So on this one, A is going to equal 2, C is going to equal 20. There's my A, there's my C. I multiply them together and get 40. I'm going to list the factors of 40. I need 1 and 40. I need 2 and 20. I need 4 and 10. I need 5 and 8. I need two factors of 20 that add, see how it's positive there? I'm going to add to get positive 13. Well, 1 plus 40, 1 plus 40 is not 13. 2 plus 20 is not 13. 4 plus 10 isn't 13. It's close, but 5 plus 8 is 13. So now I rewrite, I rewrite my trinomial as a polynomial with four terms. So I have a 2x squared. I rewrite the 13x. I think I'm going to put the 8x first because I like matching the 8x with the 2x squared. And then the 5x plus 20. Now it's time to group. So I'm going to group these first two. I'm going to group these two. Put a plus sign between. All right. I GCF the first quantity. So I divide by 2x. Divide by 2x. So I get 2x times the quantity of x plus 4. I divide by 5. Divide by 5. It will be plus 5 times the quantity of x plus 4. Did you hear me repeat myself? Yeah, I said that x plus 4 twice. So if I go to highlighter time, boom, and boom. All right. Now, I have a GCF here, so I'm going to factor out a quantity of x plus 4 from both terms. And that will get me the quantity of x plus 4. times the quantity of 2x, because that's all that's left here, plus 5. And there you go. If you double distribute that, you should get the original problem. I'll leave that to you to verify. All right, let's try a couple more here. And here we go. So I've got 10x squared plus 23x minus 5. I don't know if you realize this, but I've written them all in descending order. The exponents are going down to 1, and then technically x to the 0. Okay, so a is here, and c is there, and I multiply, and I get 50. I'm actually ignoring the sign. Okay, I'll use the sign in a minute. So I'm going to list the factors of 50, 1 and 50, 2 and 25, 5 and 10, and that's it. Okay, so I need two of these factors of 50 that are going to subtract get positive 23. So could I do 50 minus 1? Well, I could, but it won't equal 23. How about 5 minus 10? That's not 23. How about 25 minus 2? Oh, 25 minus 2. Yeah, that's the ticket right there. So I'm going to write down... Um, I don't feel like I have a mistake, but maybe I do. I don't know. Let's keep going. So I'm going to write down 10x squared, and I'm going to rewrite this as a positive 25x minus a 2x uh, minus 5. It's time to group. So I'm going to group these two. I'm going to group these two and put a plus in between. Now, I grabbed that negative there. It's hard to tell. Maybe I should do more of that. Okay, so the GCF here, I think, is going to be 5x. So I'm going to get a 5x times the quantity. I have to divide by 5x here, divide by 5x there. And I'll have a 2x plus 5, and then I'll factor out a negative 1. The only common factor I see is a negative. So I'm going to factor out a negative 1, and then I'll have a 2x plus a 5. Ooh, look at that. I see a common factor. I do. I do. I see a common factor. I do. I do. So I'm going to factor out the quantity of 2x plus 5. What will be left? 
a 5x and a negative 1. And there you go. Pretty easy stuff. Let's do one more example and then I'm going to walk you through some notes, okay? All right, so identify A and C. I always want it in descending order. Multiply A and C and I'm going to get 42. List the factors of 42. 1 and 42. 2 and 21. 3 does go in. Uh, let's see here. 14 times. Yeah. If you're wondering how I did that so quick, I saw the 21. And I broke the 21 in my mind into 3 times 7. And I had a 2. Well, I needed the 3 to be by itself. And then 2 and 7 would be 14. So that's how I got that. Okay, 4 is not going to go in. 5 is not going to go in. 6 will go in 7 times. How do I know that? I just multiplied them together. Now, I need two factors of 42 that subtract, because the 7 is negative, to get negative 11. Well, 14 minus 3 is 11, right? But I want negative 11. How about 3 minus 14? There you go. You can see why I made such a big deal about being able to subtract positives and negatives. You need to be able to do that, ladies and gentlemen. You can't just keep blowing it off. So, I'm going to need a positive 3 and a minus 11. So I'm going to come here and rewrite the 6x squared. And then I have to write negative 11x as 3x minus 14x plus 3x minus 14x minus 7. It's time to group. I group these two, group those two, and I'm going to stuck a plus in between. Looks like the GCF is going to be at 3x. I'm going to divide by 3x. The 3x will come out front. I'll have 2x plus 1. Here, I think I'm going to factor out a negative 7. How did I know negative 7? Well, these are both positive, the 6x squared and the 3x. So what I get left in the quantity, I'll want them both to be positive. So I'll factor out a negative 7, and I'll get a 2x plus a 1. Oh, look at that. Time for highlighters. So I've got this 2x plus 1. And this 2x plus 1 is the common factor. So I will factor it out. 2x plus 1 as a quantity, and a 2x plus 1 as a quantity. So I'll get the quantity of 2x plus 1, and I'll multiply by 3x minus 7. And there you go. Hopefully this is getting a little bit easier. Well, let's walk through one step by step. Here's your video quiz. Now it's a little different than other video quizzes because I'm going to talk you through the answers. I want you to take detailed notes on this. Okay, so the question is when factoring the trinomial 6x squared minus x minus 15, what do I do with the 6 and the 15? Well, the first answer is I multiply them. Multiply them. 6 times 15. Then list the factors of that number. So 6 times 15 is 90. There'll be a lot of factors of 90. So I'm going to get 1 and 90, 2 and 45, 3 and 30. Uh, 4 is not going in. 5 is going in 18 times. Uh, 6, I think, will go in. Yeah, 6 will go in 15 times. I just did 6 times 15. 7 is not going in. 8 is not going in. 9's going in 10 times, and there we go. Now what do I do with the factors of that product, of the 90? Well, uh, in this problem, I'm going to subtract them because the 15's negative. Okay, what number do I hope to get? Negative 1. See the negative 1 right there? All right, well, I look at this, and I see it right off the bat, 9 minus 10. Okay, so in other words, I need 2 factors that are one unit away from each other, but I want it in the negative direction, so it's going to be 9 minus 10. Okay, I'm trying to get negative 1. Okay, so I'm going to subtract the factors, hoping to get negative 1. So now I'm going to rewrite this. 
as 6x squared uh, plus 9x minus 10x minus 15. And now, for the rest of the video quiz, I want you to finish factoring this by grouping. All right, we're going to get a lot of practice with this. Make sure you finish that video quiz. I want to see the notes filled out for parts A, B, and C, and then I expect to see this factored completely. All right, Mr. Lawrence signing off. Have a good night, everybody.